Uh, let's start with the with the with the presentation and uh, with the with the uh, Mexican territory. Start with the information about what is the the uh, the uh, our country, our Mexican country that we're doing business. So uh, this is the map of Mexico. Uh, basically, it's uh, we have uh, 30, 31 states and one uh, federal district, which is the the, the capital of. Uh, all the business corporates in the Mexico City. So basically, here um, you can see uh, all the the color, you know, the entire the entire states and that we have a population of 127 million of people uh, in the entire country. The surface it's 1,064,375 uh, uh, kilometers and. Uh, it's a it's a very interesting country with a different kind of cultures on 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 the on the perspective for business. So let's start with the Mexican general culture. So timing on the timing and scheduling, uh, the people in Mexico works a little bit different than the the people in the U.S. and in, uh, obviously in other countries. So the working hours. Uh, usually, uh, the window, the time frame for that is between 8 a.m. until 9 p.m. So this is the the time that the people work in the different regions or or, or different industries. That's not means that work straight all the hours, but that means that some kind of industry works at, at eight, some kind could be at nine, mostly at nine, obviously, and and some of them a little bit late. And then in the afternoon, same thing. So the earliest uh, people leaves the, the job around six or seven. So the, mostly seven thirty is, is is the most common uh, time hours just just to work. As well, uh, it's a it's a custom in, in Mexico to take a long uh, lunch break. It's the pan of industry as well, but usually the long uh, the the break lunch is around two hours, hours and a half, two hours, maybe two hours and a half. So uh, scheduling a meeting in Mexico, it's, it's all, always an interesting issue. So, you know, uh, Mexico is not known uh, uh, as uh, for their punctuality in, in a terms of, of be on time and some, you know, appointments or meetings, just to, just to let you know that. So uh, on the language and communication, uh, verbal communication, it's more, uh, it's, it's, it's more common than reading communications. So uh, Mexican people are, we're people like uh, phone calls, you know. We, for sure, we send by, through reading, through email, you know, all the main topics of the conversation, but anytime that you want to find someone, just call them, call them. So uh, on that, it's a, it's a formal uh, people and, and a respect where, I mean, very very formal people you know that the relationship is based on, on business direct it's, it's just based on on a, on a honest and honestly and and and, and uh, with the warmer you know warmer relationships it's it's uh, that is one of the important things to talk about the mexican culture on the language always is a warmer a way to communicate in whatever is the kind just to uh, by call just by maybe some uh, emails or of course in person so uh, and the communication is is very visual you know the presentations are important the people in Mexico are very very visual so uh, they communicate with the body as well we will see so uh, uh, language main for sure is in Spanish. However, English is starting to be a very common language for business. These these are used for uh, U.S. or foreign countries. So after 2000 and 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 and, uh, and uh, four years, so uh, most of the people that the public and private university uh, they're they uh, teach uh, English as a main uh, language as well. So. Uh, it's coming to be more and more a, a um, common to speak in a, in a in an English. So on the body language, that's this is important as well because the, the body language for for you can find in, in Mexican people there will always be smile, you know, eye contact, some face expressions, hand movements, especially when they are talking 
a foreign language, even when we are to speak Spanish. But but this is this is very very important because uh, the kind of culture is just to open. It's very open it and very kindly. So the people it likes to to feel that kind of warmer in a in a culture and it means friendship, relationship, business, whatever. So. Uh, at the beginning, it's a pretty common shake hands with a firm grip, you know, at the introduction the first met. So uh, Mexicans, you will feel a, a, a firm grip at the, at the time, every time that you that you're meet someone. In a, uh, as well, it's pretty common that at the end, on the, after a presentation, at the end of business, when the business is completed, or after meeting, it's pretty common a short left hug, you know, in a, in a in the left side, you know, it's it's very funny because uh, just Mexico has a, a short uh, hug in the left side. Many other countries could be in the right side, but uh, with Mexican always doing the in the left side. And it's pretty common that uh, that short hug it's coming, it's become every time that you meet someone, and uh, and then after every time you see him. The, is not only the shake, uh, uh, the firm grip on, on the shake hands. It's, it's just, it's just that this, uh, left uh, uh, um, short uh, hug, right? So uh, on the business relationship, um, we maintain a close business relationship, which means verbal or or or, or, uh, or or written, but most most verbal. Again, warm communication. So not cold. We are not people like a cold communications. Um, on that side as well, usually are long-term relationships. We are not people that uh, short-term uh, relationship. Every time that you make the business with someone, you will be become a friend. You know, uh, people very well received, and 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 that will be considered in the business relationship. Loyalty is such a key. You know, after an agreement, every time that the Mexican people, you know, give you your word, they will maintain their word doesn't matter that something different on the process on the business if there if you do a deal with that it's they will maintain the the, the war as, as much so it's a loyalty is the key for for mexican business uh corporate culture we are we are starting to be developed on the on the corporate culture you know many of the of the companies are meat or small companies it's not a big companies so uh, we're learning about that However, foreign companies established in Mexico, they create their own cor uh, culture corporate with their employees. The Mexican companies, I mean, it just depends on the size, but they're starting to join in that kind of culture. Values, mission, family, standard policies, training, and of course, the business expansion for that. Uh, on the side of, of meals and meetings, um, breakfasts are, you know, for Mexico between 10 and 9 sometimes even late at nine. Uh, lunch is between two and four. That's a pretty most common hours to go to lunch. Dinner, it's interesting. Dinner is starting at eight and, and sometimes starting at 10, you know, 9.30. It's a, it's a pretty common, you know, time to, to people in the, in the southern border go to dinner. So um, the best time uh, to... to um, schedule a morning meeting it's at 10 a.m 10 a.m in the morning it's a pretty good time so you can you you can find you know uh, that the best time to schedule an afternoon meeting it's at four so a very common thing is that when you're done or completed a business or you have a business presentation or some introductions just to try to make a deal it's pretty common that that uh, go to dinner especially when you win, win-win business for both sides. It's let's celebrate with some, some uh, a, a dinner and be aware that the dinner will be start maybe no, no earlier than eight. So maybe nine, a 30 as much early. So until nine, it's okay. And could be extend for around 11 or maybe midnight if, if could possible with a couple of tequilas or beers or whatever other drinks. So it's a, it's a, it's a great celebration for that, for the culture, for, for a closer business. And start a, a relationship. What to wear, uh, wear, I mean, wear it's a business casual. 
for business, uh, we're very visual. It's no thing, you know. It's a uh, business casual. It's pretty okay for most of the country, and uh, largest city and the, and the central area of Mexico tie and suit. So it's, it's pretty common in the, in the in in the north of of the country. It's pretty hot, so we're not used too often tie and suit. And and and, and in the south is most common. You know, business casual, leaning, you know, something like that. So more relaxed. Um, so let's talk very briefly about the main territory by regions. This is the, the, the map of the country is divided in three main regions. It's very, very selected and divided. So we're noted even for Mexicans, you know, it's Mexicans. It's just the north, the center of the country, and the south. This is it's very marked, you know, that kind of division in, in terms of culture, in terms of people, in, terf, in terms of what they eat, how uh, they're dressed or wear, you know, uh, even the weather. So they are, they are uh, we know that, like a people, where are you from? I'm from the North. Oh, you are from the North because you're speaking with uh, that kind of accent, you know, when you talk. Where are you coming from? A cent oh, you're from the center. Yes, they have a very particular accent in their talk. Same thing on the south. So uh, the culture by regions, you know, this is interesting just to you guys let you know. So uh, in the north, it's, a, it's ha a region by highly competitive region. It established uh, companies like Automotive, Aerospace, Technology and Manufacturing. Uh, it's an international investment and manufacturing area. Not as much as the center of the country, but uh, it's a pretty close on that. People, trustable to do business. In the North, you're not to be very concerned from putting all the entire country, everyone in the main, you know, general, are, we are trustable people, but let's divide by region. So the region of the North are very trustable to do business. So you don't have any, any not to be, get any big concern on that. There are people, there are honest people, good people. We are strong that the people with the uh, uh, accent, you know, accent with the, when you talk. In the, in the north, uh, we are, we're, we're talking more strong, more, you know, that kind of accent. So people will like hunting, people will like ranch. Uh, the meals are beef, you know, mostly beef. It's more like a cowboys, you know, people, dry land, very dry land, and very hot weather. So uh, the average high income in the country, in that region, is, high, is higher, I mean, the average income is higher compared with other regions. Of course, with the exceptions on, 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 uh, on the big cities, they have a lot of uh, uh, very high income. So in the middle of the country, it's a very high competitive re uh, region, region, you know. It's, uh, of course, automotive, our space, the technology is, is, is strong. Textiles, they are there in the, in the middle. Manufacturing, a lot of manufacturing, more than we. And of course, tequila. This is the tequila area and many other uh, business to, to deal with. So uh, it's a place that uh, uh, has a lot of Mexican and foreign investment area. So in the north of the country, it's more mainly foreign you know, investment. Uh, big corporate for automotive, aerospace, whatever. In the Mex in the middle of Mexico, the government invests more in the in a in a, in a local, uh, you know, country investment as well. Of course, the foreign investment is is, is pretty huge. There are the the corporate areas for uh, company corporate headquarters, you know, area for for many many of the companies. Of course, Mexico City, but as well all the cities. Pretty in fancy cities around there, Querétaro, San Luis, Leon, you know, Silao, many of, of others, right? So they are friendly, they are people that are very friendly, but they are more stressed, you know, they are more stressed people, a little bit more mistrustful people, you know, uh, a little bit lot more than, than we. It's, they have a unique accent when they talk, you know very very common we identify everyone identify people from the center of the country you know in mexico so they deal a lot of with traffic they eat more more pork you know not 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 beef you will not found a good quality of beef there than the north but they're you know they have a more eat it more different than, than the north of the people it's a mountain land you know it's a very diversified but uh, some some areas are semi-desertic but some are 
some are greens, you know, they have a lot of mountain in that area, and they have a nice weather. Uh, the meat, um, uh, their income in the general, of course, with, by, with the exception of the, of the, because Mexico City has a, a lot of people with a huge, huge income in, 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 in that, so many, many uh, a, a people like a, with the director levels or manager levels lives very, very, very well. But the average, you know, the rest of them, the average, they have a mid-average income, you know, compared with the North. Uh, for the South, let's, let's jump for the South. The South, it's more the main golden are the tourists, you know, it's a, a lot of uh, tourists there. So cattle, you know, farm businesses in Maine. Uh, we have a few foreign investment like Maquiladoras or like uh, uh, companies that are established there. They are trustable to do uh, business for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they're more a, uh, you know, they're very helpful, you know, uh, there are these people in the South are very, very kindly and very helpful. They are happy all the time. They are happy more than, more than the center of the country, of course, and more than we. So I think these guys are the better happy in the, you know, in the country. They are more innocent, you know, in many, in many things in a good, in a good work, right? Like it's innocent. They eat more chicken, you know, than pork and beef. It's a mix of pork and, 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 and beef. They live in, in a plantation areas. They have a green areas. It's a rainland, summer weather. It's a beautiful area just from our country. It's a lovely area, you know, for them. Very, very good people as well. So the average on income is low average versus our other region. Of course, exception apply. You can, you can be there and say, oh my God, this is an owner of, uh, this is a company so that uh, uh, workers from these companies and, and lives very well. But uh, yeah, the average in, in general is, is lower than, than the others uh, reaches. So uh, let's talk about industry by sectors. Hold on a second, real, real quick, Sam. Yeah. Somebody had, had asked, Anthony had asked about, um, um, you were mentioning about being careful when, when closing business. Um, I think you were just saying when you're building a partnership or, or is there something that we need to be a, worry about or or what does that look like closing business in Mexico right good question thank you for that it's just you need to be just a little bit more care about the terms about the financial agreements you know about the know who you are doing business in this case the best option for that is just to uh, walk through some uh, you know, partnership that can support to verify that the company exists, that they are, you know, it's a established company, that they are registered on the IRS, you know, it's, a, it's just you need to be a little bit more, because it's a, it's a big area, you know, uh, near to Mexico City, it's more, it's a lot of people there, you know, it's a lot, a lot of people, and you, it's most common that you can find some kind of, uh, you know, fraud in some business. So just need to be more focused on that. You know, in the North, you don't have that concern, you know, because uh, it's the people is more, it's more, uh, more kind of, uh, um, how can I say, you know, more, not honest, I don't want to, to use that word, but it's just, we are just less people and it's more easy to, Understand that we're doing business with someone. It's a win-win philosophy. And in the middle of the country, sometimes could be an, 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 you can find a, per, a business that they want to just win in one side. That is important that you need to walk more through and be more clear about what is the terms of payments, where is the term of finance, you know. I can tell you, 80 or 90 percent of the time when you're doing business in the in the let's say 80 in the in the middle of the country it's a good business and and you have no problems for payment delays or something like that you know in the north you have a 99 percent of the times and in the south maybe 98 or 95 in the middle of the country we can talk about 90 right right or a little bit less it's just that the point you need to be more careful and clear about what person you're selling sales and the terms of payment and everything with like that you know okay 
Okay, I think that makes sense. So really, just 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 um, make sure that that both sides understand what's being sold and the conditions around it are very very clear between each other. Then and we're good. Right. No, and 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 and, and makes sense. You know, that's it's it's just it's it's just the and as I mentioned, every time you your you mean your business will be done correctly. But did, if I choose these three regions, the middle of the country is just depend. The company and uh, you know uh, the the industry you you are selling your or buying just just need to be revised twice. You know, nope. That's my recommendation. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Excuse me. Um, industry sector by region. So let's talk about our three uh, regions on, of the country as a main business sector. As you can see here, you can see in the north. Uh, we have a, a uh, you know, a lot of industry is already established. One of the main industry are the automotive industry and the aeros aerospace industry, as well another kind of, of uh, uh, manufacturers, right? But the main two are in this region from uh, Coahuila here. I don't know if you can see, but I'm, I'm circling this. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nuevo Leon and Coahuila here. We have a largest a corporate automotive a companies like uh, you know GM, uh, Chrysler, you know Dodge, um, and uh, that that's our the, the two big one. You know we have as well a Ford, which are here near to Sonora. You know near to to is next with Arizona. They have the largest a a a, a Ford assembler a company. As well, we have a lot of aerospace, you know, in that region, and another kind of uh, a, 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 a industry diversify electrical, you know, appliances, home appliances, as as, as many others. So this is the the we have two big uh, corporate uh, car, uh, automotive areas. Just one in, in it's it's right here next to Arizona in Sonora. And the other is next to Nuevo Leon and, and, and Laredo in this side, which are Ramos Arispe. So uh, other than that, we have a lot of cattle here, you know, that is the main. Nuevo Leon in Monterey here in the middle of almost in the limit between the center and the north. Uh, we have a lot of technology, a lot of technology and, and new business about new, new Kia uh, corporate and assembly, a, a factory are already there. So um, in the center of the of the country, it's very diversified. However, in the center, they are stronger than the north in terms of automotive company. Uh, in the Silao area and in the Puebla area, they are they are Audi, they are Volkswagen, they are GM, they are all the suppliers for them. You know, very, very, very strong a, on the automotive a sector, you know, as I mentioned, more than the north. However, it's diversified as well. They have a new a, entities for our aerospace as well. In Querétaro, it's huge. There are, they are, they are a lot of a, a, a job and investment there. So uh, we have most, more city than the north with, with the large industry you know, in, a, in, in the different sectors, as stronger as automotive or aerospace or technology. So uh, this is the area for textiles as well. You know, Levi's and many others like them are located in this area, you know, in the middle of the country, in Aguascalientes and Zacatecas. Tequila is the area for Jalisco and Nayarit, all this area. Technology, we have technology as well there. You know, manufacturing, different manufacturing, Carretero, San Luis, Puebla, Toluca, Mexico. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of different kind of industry. It's huge. It's huge, the opportunity to do business there, to find a buyer, to find a supplier. It's many of the chains. Every chain of the industry, you know, it has a lot of vendors and a lot of opportunity to sell products or buy products from their side. Few cattle, not not much, you know, a lot of corporates, a lot of uh, industry here in the Mexico City, manufacturing, many, many, many others uh, industry. The South, just talk a little bit about the South. Uh, we have a rail, for example, it's in the middle of the center on the South. 
is just for the rails wagons for uh, you know exported from you uh, to us to french to many others europe's countries as well huge large companies for railroad uh, wagons to build rails as well uh, but in the south is more cattle here here is cow, cow you know beef here is more pork you know cattle so uh, and a lot of uh, tourism in this area you know from uh, from Kalima, Michoacan, Oaxaca, Chiapas, Quintana Roo, Yucatan, which are Cancun and many others, you know, it's it's a lot of a lot of tourists. It's a very 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 green area. All this beautiful area, Mexico, very traditional as well. A lot of new uh, cities, you know, with a lot of potential. A north pretty close to the United States. So this is very quick, just to divide the same map from a country in a, in a, in a five uh, different or six different regions. We have North, East, Northwest, Occident, Center, South, and Southeast. So uh, in the Northeast, we have California here, Arizona. We have Automotive Aerospace Manufacturing Cattle Co. In the Northeast uh, that we are, it's Laredo, it's, an, uh, it's uh, uh, it's Texas, right in the USI, Nuevo Leon, Tamaulipas, many others. Automotive aerospace manufacturing, high technology, electrical, electronic, home appliances. Uh, Occident, we have, this is the area for tequila, textiles, a lot of manufacturing, farming for sure. Automotive machinery, pottery, we have all these Mexican states. On the center, Mexico City, we have a, and, and, and a near, you know, near cities from there. A lot of automotives, electronic, high-tech, aerospace as well, machinery. Southeast, tourism, products, cattle, pork, and, and the south, of course, same thing. You know, this is the, the, um, uh, the a little bit more spread sectors just so you can identify the sectors of the area. You can get your, you know, some services or buyers. So uh, this is just some graphics. Electronics and technology, you know, you can see where states are located. The yellow here is in the north, you know, in the center as well. Electronic and appliances, same thing, a little bit more east than west, you know, a lot in middle of the center, you know. Automotive, we have same thing on the north, and here is very strong in the middle. You can find anyone. Toyota, Fiat, GM, Chrysler, Volkswagen, Audi, uh, you know, Honda, Mazda, you know, everything. And of course, all their vendors and suppliers. Aerospace is very developed on the west and on the north. And as well here in the, in, in the middle, they have a huge new plan for building airplanes and some other kinds of aerospace. So uh, this is a Mexican uh, state with the highest growth and projection. You know, for the next three years, there are many of them. Some of them are you know it are in the in the north, Nuevo León. This is very it's one of the largest cities that we have. Are Monterrey, Nuevo León, Guadalajara. You know, in was the city of Tequila in Occidente, and uh, Puebla, of course. You know, in the middle of the country, and then, well, after Mexico City, right? But then there are the 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 three largest city, the others are in the middle of the, of, of the country with a decent, pretty decent side. But uh, as you can see here, you know, Jalisco is Guadalajara, the tequila. Guanajuato is the area for Silao, Aromotip. Aguascalientes is the area for textile. State of Mexico, Diversify, Aromotip, and many others. New, New León, um, in the north, technology, cars. San Luis Potosí, Aromotip, Carretero, Aerospace, Aromotip, and Ciudad de México. Okay, so let's talk about uh, a bit briefly about uh, Mexico customs and SAT. This is an this is an important slide just to let you know what is the difference between very quick between U.S. and, and Mexico. So Mexico, um, let's start with the U.S. very briefly. U.S. the customs depend on on, on uh, customs and border protection, uh, a, a secretary. So. Uh, an IRS is totally different from a, from a customs and, and border protection 
right, Kevin? So you can you can correct me if I'm so wrong in some in some of this statement. However, customs and border protection is their main priority is the is the homeland security, right? Is the security of the borders. So Mexico, in this case, we talking about the customs. There, everything depends on the Mexican Federal Secretary Secretary of Treasury, which is Secretaría Hacienda and Crédito Público. This is the, the the Treasury Department, whose control everything about taxes and even about customs in Mexico. So when you hear SAT, SAT is just a uh, federal office, gober, uh, government office, who administrate, you know, the, the Mexican Department of Treasury. So customs report to SAT, but SAT report to, 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 to HCP. So uh, however, you will see everything mainly under under SAT. So SAT controls Aduana Mexico, which is a Mexican customs, controls uh, IRS tax compliance, controls the federal IRS audits, you know? And then as well, the, oh, what is this? I'm so sorry, I apologize. That's my mistake. I thought that I removed this because this is not an assault. This is another tax. This sent me someone from that. Uh, from SAT. So but let's use the, the, the right slide. So it is just pretty the same. I'm just, I'm just uh, receiving because believe me, as a Mexican, we, we have a freight much more than the Mexican IRS than any other assault. So they are worse than them. So that is the funny thing on this side. You know, SAT controls as they control, you know, the revenue, the IRS revenue and the Mexican customs uh, they can join, for example, every, every import or export process that I have is very linked and related with the IRS purposes. So I would put an example. Uh, when you buy some item in Mexico, you don't pay tax because the tax is already included on that, on the product. It is different than the U.S. When you're buying something, it is plus tax. In Mexico, all the tax for the domestic commerce are included. That means when I'm going to make a southbound shipment import into Mexico, I need to pay the duties, which are the international duties for, for uh, based on the trade agreements, you know, and then I need to pay the tax as well. So that's the two, two kind of payments. So one is duties and the other is tax, but that's apply for the imports. And that's apply because it's based on the SAT regulations on that side. Every, every movement that we did on that is Mexican, on the customs, you know, it's a Mexican IRS related. So let's see if some case, for example, a federal IRS or a SAT audit is coming to be for a tax purposes. They have the availability to say, oh, by the way, do you have any imports, right? You are in port of records. Yes, I, I am. Okay, let me uh, revise just for curious some of your import pedimentos. And then you say they can extend the revision, you know, in a very easy way from tax uh, purposes for customs purposes as well. And vice versa. If they can find some mistake on a customs uh, import pedimento, they can say, oh, by the way, let me see your link or your finance statement for these imports in terms of your tax payments, your bad payments, or, you know, but it's a IBA, which is the taxes. So there, are, you, we need to be very careful about that in, in, in terms of do the right things and the right, the right, the, the things correctly in terms of customs to avoid that they can extend as well a revision or request for, uh, for uh, IRS purposes. So this is the department for that audit. It's a visit, you know, for a, a, a address visit just to revise that and they can join pretty easy extend both sides. The Mexican IRS tax compliance as well is under them. So any, any compliance, any when you go and register to get your tax ID, blah, 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 it's under SAT, okay? All these services are through Ventanilla Unica, which is a single window. They're trying to automatize much or do electronically 
must than than in a hard paper much and much and much uh, more. Okay, so. Uh, Samuel, well, I have a quick question for you real quick that I think is relevant to that. Um, the okay. question came in is, my company is being asked by one of our Mexican customers to register with the Ministry of Economy in Mexico. We mm -hmm. are not the order of record. We'd be interested in hearing what this would mean to my company. Okay, so then we need to, we need to uh, just to be very clear, just for a register of import, you know, just it's allowed to the Mexican entities. This is a topic that we can speak in a March, you know, for a processes for customs, but just in a, in a more expansion, even you can send me some, you know, some email directly if you're just to expand more the, the answer. But let's start. Just the Mexican companies are allowed to be importer of records in Mexico. So when, when a company uh, that the U.S. company trying to sell someone in a, in a, for some uh, Mexican uh, uh, purchaser uh, and they are not registered on the importer record, they need to do, they need to set up that in customs, but not in that uh, registration and that approval not, uh, not implicate a big issue for the U.S. company, as meaning this time the vendor, the U.S. vendor, because uh, the importer record is responsible for all the duties, for the HTS code, for the payment, for everything. So the U.S. shipper just only be consulted in a, you know, through not directly by by by, uh, by Mexican SAT, but could be consulted by through CVP. I say, can you provide me the, you know, the proof that you sell this. Uh, uh, price, I don't know, this is the right price in case that they have the, some doubt or something. In other words, there's no liability for the U.S. shipper. They are not to be concerned at all if their shipper a register as importer record. So, and just to be clear, foreign companies are not allowed to be registered as importer of records. I don't know if that uh, answered the question, Kevin. Is, yep, is... that, that's fine. And I think, you know, I know that you're going to get into this in, uh, in March at, at uh, really, we're going to dive into the process and some of these, uh, some of these de in detail next, next month. So that's, that's fine. Yeah, you can continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So uh, this uh, is, is just marking the, the ports that we have in Mexico. Uh, we have a, 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 a like uh, land ports, you know, ocean ports and air ports. So uh, ocean are just just blue ones. The um, um, two ports on the southern border, 19 ports on the U USA border, you know, but they are all here and we can clear by ocean, you know, air or, or route, you know, land by truck. Okay, so let's talk about a little, a little bit about how to start an entity in Mexico to do to do business. If a foreigners uh, want to, or US persons want to start an entity in Mexico and make an investment directly in Mexico, um, there need to be three main steps. One, the lawyer's company that we create this, the first step. The second one, the public notary, uh, notary in Mexico. And third is with the SAT. So the lawyers, the law firms create and company articles determining what kind of entity you want to do in Mexico, pretty similar like, like here, Inc, company, incorporation company or a limited uh, liability company. Um, the business services that we're going to provide and the amount for investment, company name, company name is important, I will tell you why. Uh, and the provider list of shareholders in chaos. So uh, then when everyone is in agreement with that, so uh, this is going to pass for a public notary to revise and approve the company agreements and articles. The public notary is responsible, um, the, the, the accountant, so inside them, they are responsible just to revise if the, uh, you know, if the company can be uh, a, uh, uh, you know, the partnership agreements and, and, and all that. So submit the name for SAT, uh, the name company name for SAT, uh, Mexican new entity request creation. It's a separate submission, um, and uh, then provide a list and a share, uh, shareholders. Uh, so 
the set going to proceed and verify all that info and, and will approve. So the last portion, the last part of SAT, they receive the request, they're revised and approved the information, register the name. This is our, the guide to register the name and the list of shareholders, provide the Mexican tax ID, and, uh, and these guys are the same that approve the Mexican uh, import of records as well, as well in case. Okay, so uh, websites to find companies, suppliers, and buyers in Mexico. It's hard, you know, it's hard. I know that uh, even for us uh, in, in Mexico, it's hard to find, you know, some vendors or some buyers. However, uh, the, best, the best way here is by relationship with a good, you know, partnerships, you know, everyone that we can support in a, in a, in a customs matters or in a transportation matters, we know, you know, we can make some recommendations sometimes, not, not even, but let's talk about uh, some web page that you can use. Uh, the first one are uh, government page, which include Economia, Secretary of Economy. Uh, it's a chamber of commerce, you know, from Mexico, which are kind of Sintra, uh, local chamber of commerce, you know, uh, Camimex is another, you know, organ private organization that they can provide. So the best deal on that is other than go with the, with the, this uh, web page from the government, the local chamber of commerce uh, that you can find in a different region that you are interested to sales or to buy based on the kind of industry in the region that we already, the, we already show. So another are private. The private is not too trustable by my perspective. Sometimes they're required to subscription. So the most trustable it's, is, is, the, is the Chamber of Commerce like this in the middle. Always you can do a call, you know, first. Remember, Mexican are more, more a verbal than email. If you send, us, send an email, probably you will not uh, get a response for a while. You know, sometimes yes, but most of the times no. So the best way to do that is just call them. Someone else speaks English, it's no major concern than that. Other other things, you can call them and say, hey, give me your personal, your your direct email just to send my request by reading. But first call, that's my recommendation. And then you can get a, 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 a response from their side. So, uh, I think it's pretty much about, uh, you know, the, how do you uh, a, uh, the business with Mexico. Uh, we, can, we can start with do some questions. Uh, I, I can imagine that some questions uh, yes. I already answered it with the presentation, but we can get another ones for sure. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think you might have answered um, some of them. One of, uh, one of the questions asked was, um, I, I find it very difficult to find a manufacturing company in Mexico by sector with an internet search. So I search for apparel, rubber, bumpers, safety cones, products, and can never find anything. Where can I look for a list? Would those um, links that you showed provide a, a, a list by sector specifically? Because um, I've got some recommendations as well. So. Yes, yes. The, the 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 links that I already uh, uh, show there there is by sector. Yes, that correct. That correct is by sector and by regions as well. If they don't get it there, it's pretty, it's very probably that they are a, a, a give you the information for the right region or the right area. So other than other than automotive, other than textiles, and 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 other than aerospace. It's pretty, it's pretty diversified, you know, in the in the in the country. So you can find in many, uh, almost all the country vendors or or buyers. But if you're interested in do, you know, be a vendor for uh, repair machine services or whatever other for automotive, you know where they are as you can find. Or for textiles, tequila is very specific as well. You know, uh, a uh, cavalry just diversify you know a little bit as well but uh yeah you can find all that in, in the links mm -hmm. yeah and i and i also recommend um for people looking for specific sectors things like that um as it comes out of mexico um 
there's uh, data mining tools out there. I know that Scarborough does a lot of uh, consulting work with companies, trying to find a different uh, different buyers, vendors, things like that. You could email me. Feel free to email me. We could talk about it. Um, I tariff numbers and, and do searches and, and try to find vendors down there or, or suppliers and or clients, sellers, um, people that you want to sell to down there of your products. Um, we can we can help you with that. And another great resource is is inside of every state, usually with the Department of Commerce in the state or or the Chamber of Commerce in, in the state or in, in some cities. Um, there's representation down in Mexico, and, and they're they're there to help you find uh, find specific companies that you might want to sell to and or meet with. And they'll even help host and facilitate meetings for you and help you get set up with meetings. So. Um, I know where, where I am, I have a great relationship with the Department of Commerce is really throughout the region um, that, I, that I sit in, in Kansas City here and even up in Nebraska and up in Iowa, and they all provide these services. So if you look at through maybe the Economic Development Group and the Department of Commerce, um, they've got boots on the ground, they can help validate companies that you're looking to sell to as well and provide a supportive services. And they have different programs for um, shippers in the U.S. to support us because they want us to export. We know that exports create two good paying jobs and, uh, and that's their purpose. So don't be afraid to reach out to your local Department of Commerce, reach out to a company like, like, like Scarborough, um, contact me, my contact information's on the screen right now, and we can help point you in that right direction as well. So th those are some others. So let me go through and, and answer some additional or get some additional questions out there for you. Um, one of the questions from our friend uh, Robert um, Prager. Um, he asks, how do you check if, if a company is financially stable in Mexico? I know that like the Department of Commerce that I mentioned earlier will help, but are there some other resources down there, Samuel? Uh, not for that, you know, not necessarily, but the best thing, the first step on that is that it's a company that is already established on the SAT, you know, register with their tax ID. In, and and uh, sometimes they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're Mexican companies must to um, request a uh, address confirmation, you know, for address verification for, you know, a, uh, for their tax ID registration. So we call uh, R2 is the format, you know, is the, the, is the verification that you're, you're still doing business, that you are located in the, in the address that you have registered and sat. And uh, so if you, if you got that document, you know, the confirmation of the status is, it's like a reconfirmation, you know, of the status. That means that uh, it is a established company and financial terms, because if not, IRS immediately they're close their business or, or putting a lot of fines and they are not able to, per, to, to buy or sell, you know? So the best way, first thing, is to register in the, in the SAT and, and if they have the verification or of the update status no more than one year, and this is more than enough to, to determine that they are a, a financial stable on that, you know? And, uh, you know, so the best recommendation as well for that is just to uh, make the deals with, uh, with the terms of payments very clear, you know, very, very open it in that and, and move your, your goods when you have more, you know, that verification from them and, uh, and uh, you know, something by, by reading, you know, not necessarily a contract, but something that says I have my compromise for that. Keep in mind that it's just the pain of the size of the company. You can make a research in the web, you know. It's a database for the company as well that you can find in a SAT web page in order to be, in order to confirm that they're active, you know, in their tax duties. And, and that's it. I think it's more than enough. Well, Claudio asked, asked something that I think is uh, similar. They requested, they, they have a... Um... The question is, we requested some references for credit evaluation from a new customer in Mexico, and they got offended by it. Is this not customary there when requesting credit from vendors? Uh, I, I mean, it is, it, is, it is a proof, but it is not a, uh, a uh, totally proof that they are stable financial. You know, it's, uh, it's, 
if there if the references come from a very strong or international or solid company known for anyone you know i mean i don't know is no one's going to be a walmart never going to be a reference for someone but if you found a company that gives you a references for a bank for example it's a good for sure yeah it is it is a fact it is for sure it's a it's a good references but other local you can search the companies that they are giving you the references you know and the references is not a big deal on that you know in in a in a, in a just to determine if it is trustable or not it helps. Yeah, i think i think the question is more geared towards culturally and they ask for references by asking for references their client was offended that they were asking for proof of their financial health is it common for a, say a US business to ask a Mexico uh, client a new client um, for credit references is that is there a certain way that maybe they should approach that issue to not offend um, or or was that maybe just a one off situation no, they're not going to offend. For sure, you can ask. You can proceed without any concern, and and this is a it's something that the culture is accepting. You know, yeah, it is. I mean, oh, it might have yeah. just been a, a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's I mean, there can there you can I mean, as a U.S. company, you can say send me some references for your financial yes, and and the culture the the company is not going to take in a in a in a bad way. Nope. Okay. To do business. Here's a question. In, in your presentation, you mentioned that the company name, your company name when you're registering an entity in Mexico mm -hmm. is very important. Why? Because only the SAT is going to approve that name of the company in order to, to there can provide a formal legal name and the, the, uh, the, your tax ID. In other, in, other, in other words, for example, if I use, if I'm going to create a Mexican entity, I'm going to use a name pretty similar, like uh, Walmart or like uh, Nike or like even not international brands, but even local, you know, brands that can confuse, you know, for the buyers from that product that they're thinking that they're going to purchase a product for a twin company from uh, a, another big one, the SAT, the government, the IRS government, they're not allow you to use that name, you know? So this is in order to protect to everyone that no one miss, have a misunderstanding when they're thinking that they're doing business with a, some, a company uh, with a brand very recognized, you know, make sense? Yeah. So I've got a couple questions here as it relates to a couple specific industry sectors um, and and uh, and then and then uh, regions. This one is: We are a liquor distributor. Given the current political climate, should we be anticipating any importing changes for tequila, mezcal, or other alcoholic beverages coming from Mexico? Oh yes, that's an important question. Based on the last declaration internally from the secretary of economy yes going to affect we're not going to send you more tequila to united states <laughs> i'm so sorry no, just, just kidding no in this case so sorry i apologize for that no uh no in this case you know um of course not i mean we are friends we have united states and and mexico we are our closest friends so uh it's not going to affect anything about, in my perspective, especially, you know, on the liquor sector that we're sending to, to, to there. No, of course not. You know, the political situation is going to be fixed and it's going to be uh, found a way to do business in the worst of the cases, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, something is, it, it, it's, it's wrong. So no, for a Mexican side, no, it is not. As far as we know, you know, we are monitoring closely all the, you know, the NAFTA negotiations and many other political situations in Mexico. But uh, of course, not going to be affected uh, by anything in a bad way. You know, uh, on the liquor, liquor sector and the tequila, we, we have a very, 
uh, internal regulations that we need to comply before we export, you know, and the companies need to register, need to be very detailed about what they're sending into the United States, just because United States need to be need to be sure or ensure that we uh, that they are receiving the quality product from the rights rights companies, uh, specifically talking about tequila, no. And uh, but no, it is no major concern even for that sector or for any other. We have. We had a uh, past experiences, you know, from uh, uh, when we start the NAFTA agreement for some uh, circumstances that, that could affect, you know, that uh, the investment, the foreign investment in Mexico. I remember that for, for uh, a, uh, a uh, automotive sector at the time that we joined in the 1994, the, the automotive sector. And everyone was concerned about that. Well, as was a, a uh, international agreement, and we need to follow that rules, what the country, Mexico country did, they established a deferred duties program in order to, to, to continue using some um, a, uh, raw material for that sector. In other words, in the worst of the cases, if uh, NAFTA going or whatever other uh, uh, political situation or whatever other things stress the relation, the commercial relationship, always it's a found a way to not stop to do business. That is a fact. My, it's 18 years of experience on the customs brokerage and, uh, and uh, international commerce and always it's, it's the same. Don't be worried about that. It's then nothing affect that international commerce. Yeah, I think it's important to know that nothing has changed thus far. The, the last rounds of negotiations just ended up in Montreal a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. um, with, some, with some good feedback and so forth. I was just at an event with the U.S. Chamber um, up in uh, the Des Moines last Friday um, speaking on NAFTA and so forth in the agreement, and uh, the, the rhetoric was, was, was pretty good. We, we felt pretty confident that things are moving in the right direction as of right now. So. Um, I think all is good there. I do have a question about um, here on, um, you know, I think a common common question, our friend Terry um, said, I heard somewhere that Mexico did not allow products made in China. Is that true? It's, uh, uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Is, is not allowed? Uh, does Mexico allow imports from China? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes, for, for, for all the countries, I mean, yes. So, uh, it is right now the globalization is going to be more and more and more equal for you know for a uh, you know the international commerce. However, one of the advantage from from United States and Mexico is that we are partners. We are we're friends. I mean, we are very close one from the other. But yes, Mexico accepts a uh, a uh, import for almost all the countries. Even maybe I'm not sure North Korea, but I think it's yes. So right now, so we have no. No major, you know, we have some restrictions from North, but some countries, it's just depending on the, uh, the HTS code on the commodities, but it is a fact, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions here, Vicky asked uh, Corbett, uh, Corbett, a very, very good question. Is the growth projected for Central Mexico specific to industrial growth or some other sector? Ah, good point. Uh, it, is, it is for diversified sectors, you know. Focus it, still focus it on the on the automotive, aerospace, electronics, you know, machinery. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, it's just it's just a little bit the you know the differences between that. So it's growing the expansion for open it sectors. Every every sector is a new opportunity to establish, you know, in Mexico. And one one of the center of the country want to give is facilitates to any investor and their vendors and their suppliers to do business in Mexico. It is, it is just very open it for, you know, for the industry. Okay. Um, we are coming close to out of time. So maybe some quick answers here from you. Um, I may have, um, the question is, as it relates to um, what is the attitude towards Mexicans from other regions? For example, someone from Saltillo working along the border or uh, El Bajo region or vice versa. What is, is there any, uh, Maybe it's uh, stereotypes or, or what is the general opinion on that? Is there anything to worry about? 
Yes, no. Uh, so, so sorry. The question is inside. What is the the, the between one 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 region, um, Mexicans mm -hmm. of one region towards attitudes towards Mexicans of another region? Is no. there is there no. anything we need to know about? No, no, no. You know, it's a, it's just different kind of uh, even even we different kind of cultures. You know, we in the north, for example, inside the Mexico, in the north we. Same thing. We take more care, you know, about uh, the, you know, do business with the, <laughs> with the, with the people from a, from a center of, of Mexico. Uh, not not too much with the south, you know, but in the center because in the center of Mexico, it's it's concentrated a lot of population, you know. And uh, but uh, no, it's not major. It's just just where we are different, you know. In the north, we are more probably not to open it, you know, less on the, on the south and, and the center, but just this internal, you know, differences between, between us. In, a, in the south, everyone is very well, talking about inside Mexico only, not the foreigners, you know, in the south, they are very, everyone is very well received, you know, they are very happy people, very friendly. And in the, in the center, yeah, we are, you know, every, everyone as well, just need to take more careful about people from the center, not take you know some kind of advantage from you know people from uh, from the north or from the south. And in the north, we are more probably a uh, a little bit more not to open it, you know, for see people from the center on the south. But it is just internal Mexican custom. But now there we we receive everyone very you know very well, just. We are we are Mexicans. We are family. You know we are, but this this different kind of <laughs> culture. We've gotten lots of questions as it relates to things like ISPM certification, Cigarpa, and uh, and some things like that. I just want to remind everybody that on March 21st we're having another webinar where we're going to go through the process. Where we're going to talk about Cigarpa, how 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 things physically move across the border. Um, uh, and and what happens at the warehouses and the border and, and things like that. So we're going to cover those on March 21st. So I hope everybody will sign up and attend. Um, so last question here: um, Any advice for doing business with the solar industry? For the, any any advice for the? I'm sorry. Can you? Oh, solar industry like solar panels. You know, there's been a big uh, uh, duty tariff on uh, Chinese-made uh, solar panels coming into the U.S. Um, any, anything uh, specific to the solar industry as it relates with Mexico and the U.S. I think it's a it's a it's a good 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 uh, uh, a uh, area of business for them. But uh, no, I mean we can. I mean they can. I believe that they can uh, a, uh, do a very good business in the north region because we have a lot of sun. <laughs> you know, a lot of sun. All the you know all the mainly. All the year it's very very hit area so in the center of the country you know for the people that uh, have the you know the um, good average income you know the company that they can distribute that is a very it's a very good region as well because have a lot of cities there you know pretty and fancy and new technology cities like uh, Puebla like a uh, Carretero like a uh, San Luis you know all that it's it's many a uh, 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 people with the, with a high professional level you know and and and, and uh, good culture as well and and a good income about that they can you know afford that that kind of products i think is 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 a good opportunity between central and north you know it's a good region just to just to found some uh distributor distribu distributor in Mexico, you know, some for distribution, some uh, some guys that they can uh, deal with that, and the U.S. U.S. client, I mean, can sell that product. But there is not a major issue for for HTS code, not a lot of restrictions, and it's pretty okay. I mean, perfect. Well, it's um, it's a little after our our skip stopping time so I want to remind everybody that um, our contact information is on the screen right now Samuel is available Samuel I thank you for contributing and, and putting this together to let it teach us a little bit more about the cultural aspects of doing business down there I didn't tell everybody beforehand that English is not your first language 
Um, but you did an excellent job today and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, from you on March 21st as well. So if anybody has a question um, that comes up after this event, please feel free to reach out to either Samuel or myself via email or phone and we'll be happy to answer your questions or, or get you to the right people to answer those questions. So thank you for attending this uh, session, this webinar on doing business with Mexico, sponsored by Scarborough University. Um, we'll see you all next month. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for participating. Thank you.